Hello guys, and welcome to Kinesiology 456B. Uh, this will be assessment and programming for at-risk populations. So, um, I'm going to do a video for you guys today, and we're going to run through um, the intricacies that surround this class, my expectations, the bar that I set uh, for my students, which is incredibly high. Um, and I'm going to just kind of walk you through some of the um, Canvas page here and show you where some important uh, documents are that you'll need on a regular basis. Um, go through the syllabus. I, I, we won't go through it too uh, intensely if you, if you have no time um, to look at this on your own. I will go through the important parts. Um, however, if you have nothing but time, I would advise you to look through the syllabus. Um, so we can uh, get you guys up and running. Uh, ignore this syllabus link here. Uh, this link in, is inaccurate. So I was trying to bring in some uh, material for this course from another semester, and it brought in some kind of old material that I don't use anymore. So do not download this syllabus. If you go here and you click that, your syllabus is right here. So this is the one you should be looking at. And if you want to go somewhere else and find it go to modules you should see that same syllabus um, will it will be right here in this module um, so let's go through uh, the home page here so on the home page you guys will see uh, a bit about me uh, some of you might not meet me in person this is uh, a little bit about what I have done and what I do uh, here at the university Again, if you want to uh, put yourself to sleep, uh, or if you can't sleep tonight for whatever reason, uh, if you have the jitters for being back at school here, uh, you could read this, and probably about the time that you get here, uh, you will fall asleep and begin to yawn. So you could use this as a sleeping aid uh, if you if you can't fall asleep. Um, I will fix this syllabus link here. Do not use that uh, currently. I will get that fixed up. Uh, rubrics will be placed here. So whenever we have a exam coming up or a project coming up, I will put rubrics here. Uh, and then we will have patho maps and extraction sheets. Um, I will get to these momentarily. Uh, all of our modules I have populated. It's, it's taken a bit of time. Um, but the only one that you guys should have access to at the moment would be uh, module one. So what I'm going to do now is in real time here, um, I am going to... Uh, open this module I got to change some dates here uh, but I am going to change some dates here and I will open this module and you guys will be ready to go so the modules everything that we'll be doing over the course of the semester is all in here and there is a lot uh, by the time you guys leave this class you should successfully be able to kind of uh, get through a medical uh, physiology course um, if you are in this course right now that means you have taken um, basic physiology in the department of zoology you have taken exercise physiology maybe some of you have taken that with me uh some of you have taken 456 a which is uh it basically encompasses physiology as well and then some of you might be taking 456 a and 456 b at the same time um i'm not teaching 456 a this semester uh but when you get into my classes, there's lots and lots and lots of physiology. Um, and like I said, the reason being is some of you guys, when you leave your uh, bachelor's, your your undergraduate studies here at Humboldt State, um, you may want to go into a different career path that has to do with health. Um, and it's my job to make sure that you understand physiology enough that you can easily um, kind of make that change and go into nursing or go into physical therapy or go into occupational therapy or go into medical school. So I'm going to uh, make sure I push you guys to the limit this semester and make sure that we understand all the pathophysiology. So um, there is also a calendar. The calendar is here. And within the calendar, I will be communicating with you guys 
uh, with due dates. So for example, I have this one up here and I'd said that this is your course and this is due on the 27th. And then I'm also going to be assigning today a journal article and some team members that I'm going to have you guys work with. So um, please look at the calendar because I have people emailing me all the time saying, I don't know when something's due. And I say, well, it's on the syllabus. And if we, for some reason, stray from the syllabus with which often happens because we're learning online right now. So sometimes we have to kind of hit the break. Um, if we stray from the syllabus, just keep your eyes on the calendar and the calendar will get you guys up to speed and up to date. All right. So here's the canvas page. Here's some of the information down here. You're going to need textbook information. I populated for you guys. Um, this is the textbook and I'm also going to be pulling a lot of stuff out of this textbook, which many of you guys have seen in 456 a um, this is optional these two will work together uh, if I have to upload any additional PDFs it will probably come from this textbook here and I believe the edition for this textbook is now on let me see they just sent me a new edition we are on the fourth edition so the fourth edition has changed quite a bit from the second edition which I really really like and I think the second edition is really good for students so um, if I need to upload some PDFs, which you will see on the syllabus, they will come from the second edition as well. Do not fret. As I said, everything is already populated. Um, you guys see that here. I, everything is already in there. I will get that information up for you when you need it. Some of this stuff is just kind of turned on and I don't know why. Uh, Canvas, as I will continue to say, is just the bane of my existence. I absolutely hate teaching on Canvas, uh, but we'll get through it. We will, we will get through it. So um, here is kind of a welcomed to the course um, paper here that I want to show you what we're going to kind of talk about today. Um, and we're going to do an introduction to the course. We're going to talk about the syllabus. I'm going to show you guys the syllabus. I'm going to show you the course format. And one thing I'm going to tell you right now is when you look at the syllabus, please, please, please keep in mind that I like to throw curveballs at you. So there will be some surprises along the way. So if there's something on the syllabus uh, or if I give you an assignment, and it's not on the syllabus and you're scratching your head and be like, well, why, why are you doing that? That's not fair. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I do put surprises um, in the course. And the reason being is you, you guys might generate some conversation and I might be reading some of your responses and I might say, oh, that's a good idea. Let's talk about that. Uh, I, I do want you to know I take these courses very, very seriously. And I am with you the entire way. I do not just upload papers and say, uh, read this and write an answer here. Um, this is full contact learning. I'm involved with you guys. I'm responding. Uh, I'm making videos in real time. I'm, I'm uploading new material in real time. So by, by no means is this a passive process for me. So there will be some surprises. Um, you guys will be doing a lot of group work. And the group work specifically will be in your exams three and four. Um, you will take two normal exams with me in this class. Um, they will be worth some points. And then you will do two projects um, in this course, which is exam three and exam four, which is with worth double the points as exam one and two. Uh, this pro these projects will uh, enforce some uh, basic needs in academia, which will be, I need to hear you speak. I need to see you present. I need to hear you um, use scientific lingo effortlessly. And I need you to critically think. And since we are learning online right now, I cannot give you basic exams where I ask you true or false because you have the world at your fingertips and you guys can look up anything. I've also been trolling the internet and looking for multiple websites where there are textbook answers from our physiology books. And I'm like, okay, so somebody uploaded those and now there's an answer key out there. Um, so I'm not going to give you guys the easy way out. Um, so the groups that you guys are going to be in, you're going to be in these groups and you're going to do your journal articles together. You're going to do ex certain exams together and certain projects together. Now, this has been successful in some classes and it has backfired in other classes. So I'm just going to put this public service announcement out there now. If there is somebody in your team that is not pulling their weight and not responding and not doing anything, uh, email me immediately 
throw them under the bus and I will certainly adjust grades accordingly. So usually these students kind of present themselves to me anyways uh, with just not turning in work or work that is unsatisfactory. Um, but if somebody is habitually not pulling their weight, um, I, I can't kick them out of the, the team, but I can grade their portions independently so that the team doesn't suffer. So I'm going to say that right now because I've gotten every type of email imaginable. Um, it, this is going to be difficult. It's difficult learning online. And the reason I'm making teams is to give you all less overall work. But if that backfires and you're doing more work because somebody's not carrying their weight, I need their names immediately and I will take care of it. So uh, you guys have an icebreaker assignment. I already looked on Canvas. It looks like some of you guys have done that. Um, I'm going to assign you guys groups and I'm going to give you this module zero. Welcome to the class. And with this module zero, uh, I'm going to assign a journal article and you guys are going to read a very basic it's going to drive me nuts. Let me fix that. Very basic review article on heart pathology. So if you want to conduct exercise and you want to fix the heart via exercise as a therapy uh, versus a therapy using pharmaceuticals, uh, we can do that. The heart physically changes and adapts to exercise. Not only does it change chemically, not only does it change on a molecular level, not only does it change in its metabolism of macronutrients, but it also undergoes physical alterations sp specifically in the left ventricle that helps people uh, kind of recover from certain pathologies. So I am going to today assign you guys with groups. I am going to assign you this journal article, and then you guys are going to have your first discussion uh, that you will do as a team that will be worth 20 points. All right. So here are the due dates, right? So icebreakers do the 27th. And then this first article is going to be Thursday, February 3rd. So let's see how this works. We're going to go into calendar. We are going to go to do, 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 Thursday, the third, and I'm going to say, discussion one sorry I'm trying to type with a microphone in front of my mouth here and um, heart patho do and I am going to say that this is for kinesiology 456 B and the time that it will be due is going to be at midnight so I'm gonna put this up and boom look at you go to calendar, it's all there. Discussion one for your team, heart pathophysiology, it's due at Thursday and it's going to be at midnight. And if, if I, you know, people want to call and write and say, well, you didn't say what time. Okay, I'm going to say right here. Um, no, I'm going to give you that. 11.59. 11.59. Oh my gosh, this multitasking is difficult. <laughs> PM, there we go. No pressure. All right, so there it is. It's up and it's ready for you. So you guys can go to the calendar and you can look at all that information there. I will constantly populate that for you. Okay, so I'm going to talk more about this in a moment. So let me get this out and let me pull this in. Here is your syllabus. And I am not going to go through this verbatim. We are going to talk about the important stuff and that is it. Okay, so you guys are in Kinesiology 456B, Exercise Programming for At-Risk Populations, Spring of 2022. Okay, so here we go. Um, here is my email address. If you need to get a hold of me, please email me. Uh, if you email me, I, I say this every semester and people still do it, do not email me through Canvas. It is a it is just a process for me to respond to emails via Canvas. So it's just easier to follow me here and email me at this address, and it makes things much quicker. Um, I gave a lot of thought to this, and um, I'm going to change this right here as well. Um, if you guys do email me, I need you to give me about 48 hours for me to respond to emails. And the only reason uh, I am increasing that is because uh, I already have about uh, 132 emails sitting in my account from the last two days. Um, 
I simply cannot sit down and uh, respond to each one of these emails. It then becomes a full-time job. It sucks me down a rabbit hole and I have many, many, many other tasks that I have to do. So uh, I am always in my office. Um, you can always stop by and come see me in my office here on the third floor of the kinesiology building. Um, I am always available for zoom. So if something is very time sensitive, you can get a hold of me via zoom or you can come see me. Um, I'm usually here from nine to five, uh, every day. Now, one of the reasons we're not having this course uh, face to face is because I have three children and they've been taken out, removed, uh, suspended from school. Uh, every time somebody has a sne every time somebody sneezes because they have to be pulled out for COVID. So there is always one, uh, one of my children home at one period of time because they had, um, they sneezed and they have to get a COVID test and we have to wait for 48 hours. So, um, it's very, very hectic right now. And this is why I need to teach, uh, via the method that I'm doing, uh, this semester. However, I am here. Uh, I am uploading and recording all of these videos here. So I will always be available. Usually on a daily basis, you can swing by and see me. Um, I am working on getting some more solid office hours and I'm also working on holding some zoom class meetings, but, um, I did that last semester. And, uh, I could not get everyone to, uh, meet at the same time. And when I said, Hey guys, I'm going to have a zoom, zoom class, um, I, three people would show up. And at that, at that point, it just makes more work because then I have to go back and teach the other folks that weren't there. And I have to be fair to everybody. So, uh, we will see if COVID lets up, if my kids are in school, uh, regularly and not getting pulled out. Um, I, yeah, everything's just kind of up in the air right now. So, uh, let's get down to our class meeting, your class every Thursday, I will upload new material for you. This material usually has reading assignments. They have very in-depth, uh, lectures where I will be lecturing on content from the textbook. Um, and I'm working usually all week to get these things assembled, get the lectures recorded and put them up so that you have a very, very detailed lecture that is, uh, directly deals with the book, um, and also additional reading assignments. Um, I will put these new materials up on canvas and I will put a video lecture up every Thursday. Um, I try to have them up by noon, but sometimes when I upload videos to YouTube, uh, there's a, there's a processing and buffering process and I have no control over that. Um, so just know that at some point on Thursday, they will be up and then you will have Thursday to Thursday to complete anything that I assign to you. So, um, generally, um, that is how this class will work, uh, until I can kind of get back and get you maybe some in-person lessons as well. Um, please, please reach out to me if you need me to have uh, a zoom meeting with you. Uh, the class, if we don't have a zoom meeting, uh, we will schedule time for zoom meetings. Um, so again, every Thursday I will upload material from you guys. You guys have Thursday to Thursday to complete everything. Okay. Uh, what is this class about? This class is basically focusing on pathology. And if you are working with somebody that has a chronic illness, uh, what do we do uh, for exercise? Because exercise is a therapy that can help uh, arrest and reverse and potentially uh, completely diminish certain chronic illnesses, uh, specifically when you're getting into things like type 2 diabetes. Uh, we'll be talking about obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, all of these things in here. We'll talk about basically how we would um, assess and prescribe exercise for these individuals. Okay. And we'll be using an evidence-based approach. Um, this here, you can read on your own. Here are the goals of the classes. You can read these on your own. Um, here is what I want to get to. This is the learning module architecture. So I will give you guys study guides. Okay. Um, I will give you guys study guides as we get closer to the exams. Now, I may be getting rid of the study guides and this is why, um, every time, let me go back to our webpage here. Every time I give you guys a reading assignment or I give you guys a video to watch, I want you to go here and I want you to click on this and look what comes up. 
These are extraction sheets for reading. And I'm going to give you 10 points to extract information and give it to me. So basically, when I give you guys an article, I have seven main points here. I ask you to tell me what the main points are and then basically make connections to the main points. Put supporting evidence here. And I want you to type this. Now you can type as much as you want. And when it comes time to doing an exam, you've already done the work. The study packet has been created. Okay. Um, and then I basically tell you how I'm going to grade you on this study packet. And I'll tell you what F, R, M, and E means momentarily. Okay. So just kind of hold tight onto that. Um, but I'm letting you give me one of these each and every week for 10 points. Okay. So you guys can create, all, oops, that's not what I wanted. You guys can create all of your own study guides on your own. Okay. The other thing I'm going to give you guys is if you, so here's the extraction sheet for journal articles, and then you can also pull this one up, which is a patho map. And this is a pathophysiology map. So whatever you're reading, you can basically design a patho map and look at what this does. It asks you for a disease. It asks you to fill out the information on the pathology. What is the overview of the pathology? Okay. And then I put an arrow here, how exercise affects this disease. Okay. How, how it, its effects is associated with the disease. So you can talk about, you know, when we exercise, we have to consider this when we exercise with somebody with cancer, here's the physiology of the cancer and then exercise effects associated with the disease. How does exercise affect the disease signs and symptoms? How, what are things to look for? when you're prescribing exercise what are some complications that can come with exercise so you see here we focus on the exercise here we focus on the symptoms here we focus on complications that can come with exercise here i'm asking you how do we test somebody that has cancer if you know the physiology you'll know how to test them once we test them how do we prescribe exercise right um, and what are some other important considerations? So this is a map. You could fill this out for every single chapter, right? You can download that anytime you read. Oh my goodness. Why is it going back there? See canvas, the bane of my existence. Um, so anything we read, you can use an extraction sheet. You can use a patho map and I'll give you, if I'm satisfied with what I see, I'll give you 10 points. If you send me garbage, I'm not giving you anything. All right. Uh, you can't just submit it for the points. So, um, I think I'm going to get rid of the study guides because you guys are creating your own. So maybe I won't give you study guides. Um, so you guys will have some journal articles, right? This will, you will do as a team. There will be worth 20 points. Okay. Uh, you will have a, hopefully we'll get to six of them, but sometimes we might not get that far. So, uh, I will ask you to read all of these, um, with your team and you guys will do basically a summary on what you read. And since there's going to be three to four of you in a team, I expect a very well-written summary, uh, that you will put in the discussion board. And remember, you might read an article with your team members and say, Hey, I'm going to take the first page. You get, you take the second page, Sally, you take the third page. We'll each fill out an extraction sheet. We'll each fill out a patho map. And then when we go to compose the summary, um, each of you guys can write a paragraph on what were the main points. I read these with a lot of criticism. So, uh, this is why I'm having you do it as a team. Okay. You guys will have quizzes. Uh, we'll have up to three to five in total. Hopefully we get to five, but sometimes we just, we just don't get there. You guys will have four exams. If you guys took 456 B with me last semester, this is a very similar, um, it's very similar format. And the reason being is because 456B and 456A are continuations of each other. So I try to keep the formats the same. So, uh, students are familiar with it. So, uh, you will have two exams that will be administered through canvas. This is very basic, basic exams. Now, um, it will be closed notes and books. I, I know that you guys have the world at your fingertips and I'm making you do patho maps and making you do um, the journal article maps, um, you guys go ahead and use them. And the reason I'm saying that is because I make my exams very, very tricky and you have to pay attention to the wording. And 
usually first the first exam people don't do well because I challenge them in a way that they haven't been challenged before. You need to listen to the lectures. I spend a lot of time focusing on details in the lectures. And if you listen to the lectures and you take notes, you will do well. Okay. But you need to pay attention to the wording on the exams. So there will be two regular exams that you're very familiar with. And then there will be exams three and four, which will be presentations. I will give you much more of that as we get closer to um, midterms. And then these will be done in a video format. Okay. Um, so the exams, there will be four exams in total. Okay. Uh, two just general and two that will be uh, very detailed. Um, so yeah, textbooks. Uh, I already showed you the textbooks on the last screen. Here are the textbooks we are using. And I think, yep, we're on the fourth edition. Um, now grading policies. Okay. This I need to talk about. And again, if you did, uh, if you did uh, my 456A last semester, very similar. Exams one and two are worth 50 points. Okay. Exams three and four, which will be in video presentation, will be worth 100 points each. Okay. So there's way more at stake here. And here's the reason why. Your exams one and two, if you guys have never had me before, you got to get used to me. It's, it's very tricky, right? Um, the way I present and the questions that I ask you, they are difficult. So I'm giving you guys a little bit of wiggle room to make some mistakes here. And then when you get here, there's no more mistakes. But if you guys knock this out of the park, that'll make up the points here, right? So that's why I, I, I kind of I organize it this way. Uh, you guys will have article summaries. Um, you guys will have quizzes. And I think I just found a mistake here. I think, uh, I think your article summaries are 50 points. Yeah. Your article summaries are 50 points. I saw somewhere else up there, there were 20. So, um, that's a mistake on my behalf. Um, okay. I'll have to fix that up there where I see it. So when you guys do an artery article, not artery article summary, they'll be worth 50 points. Okay. There we go. Um, quizzes, 20 points, journal extraction sheets, 10 points. All right. So I'm giving you a bunch of ways to get some points here. Now, when I grade for you guys, I'm going to use this rubric. Okay. It's the EMRF rubric. I realize that everyone is coming into this course with different backgrounds, different expectations. Some of you guys want to be doctors. Some of you guys want to be occupational therapists. Some of you guys just wanted to major in bench pressing and you're taking the path of least resistance and going into kinesiology, which is not true. If you're taking any of my classes, you need to know biochemistry. You need to know molecular biology. Um, so because I realize people are coming in at a different, uh, different stage in their life and in their academic career, and you're going to be doing a lot of work with teams, I'm going to make this very easy when I grade. Okay. So if somebody has had a lot of biochemistry, this class is going to be easy for them. So when I read one of their papers or I read one of their journal assignments, I will, would expect that they're going to speak very differently than somebody that hasn't had biochemistry. So to be fair, um, here's how I'm going to grade you guys. Something comes into me. And I'm going to ask this very basic question. Does the work demonstrate an understanding of the concept? And it's going to be either a yes or no. Okay. Does this work meet the expectations outlined in the assignment? Yes or no. If it's a yes, I'm going to go down two pathways here. So is it complete and well-documented? Yes or no. So I'll give you an E for excellent. There's your 90 to 85. I'll give you a no for it meets expectation and the understanding is evident, but it needs some revision. This is your 85 to 75, right? So you'll get an E or you'll get an M. All right. That's it. Because I mean, when I grade papers, everybody writes me and they're like, well, why, why did you grade me on this? And why did you give me this? And it's very hard to tell people why certain things were marked off on points uh, when you're grading a hundred papers and, um, the whole story doesn't make sense. So you get an E or you get an M. If for some reason this work is not satisfactory, I'll go down this way. No. Is there evidence of partial understanding? Yes or no. If there's yes, I'm going to say it needs revision. And a lot of times I'll let you revise. I'll let you uh, do the revisions because, um, we both get what we want. I get you interacting with the material more and you get yourself a better grade. And if you guys just hand me slop, I'm going to say it's an F it's fragmented, it's misunderstood and you get no chance to revise it. Right. Um, some people ask me here, can I revise it? Uh, sure. Um, you know, if you guys do give me a revision, I'll probably give you uh, very few points. Um, 
And same with this here. If there is a need for revision, I will give you very few points, but it might be enough to turn a B plus into an A minus. Um, here's what that looks like. E, M, R, F, right? So E, this is your A plus to B plus range, M, B to C, R, C to D, F, D to F. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to be grading you guys on. Here's a look at uh, the weeks. Um, basically, we have week one. I'm give, you guys will have an article extraction sheet that you can give me for 10 points. Week two, I'm going to give you guys an article review that you guys can uh, get 50 points on. Week three, there's a quiz for 20 points. Week four, there's your first exam for 50 points. Okay, and then we repeat it again. Extraction sheet, summary, quiz, exam. Okay, you see how this is just kind of like... Here's where you learn the material. Here's where you show me that you're kind of understanding the material with your groups. Here's where I let you go on your own and do a quiz. And then I say, okay, you've had the introduction. You got to work on it. You showed me here that you get it. Here's the, here's the actual exam. Then you're on your own. And this is going to repeat, right, all the way to week 16. And you can see the only things that change here is we're going to get to these exams, which will be 100 points and in video format. And then here is the list of everything you guys will be doing in my course. Okay. Uh, and again, this is, um, this is, um, basically a, f a fingerprint, right? It's, it's a, a, it, we might not follow this exactly. Um, and I'll change things as we, we go along here. So when you guys see a C, and you see a P, this just means clinical. So that's kind of talking about clinical things. And this here P means physiology, right? So we got a clinical portion and a physiology portion and a clinical portion and a physiology portion. And here we get into two physiology portions, right? So that's all that really means. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. That's all I really wanted to talk to you about on that particular, um, component. So, um, yeah, that's the syllabus. That's kind of the course in a nutshell. You can see what we're going to go through in this course. Um, we're going to be talking about um, myocardial infarctions, such as heart attacks. We'll be talking about clinical exercise programming, uh, AFib, right, arterial fibrillation. We'll be talking about chronic conditions, chronic heart failure. So we're going to get into some pretty deep physiology here, and I make I will make sure that on my end. I will uh, get everything organized for you and give you very detailed lectures so that you get it. If you struggle for the first few weeks of this class, please understand it is totally natural. Do not give up. I am here to help you get through this, not to keep you from passing this. All right. So we are in this together um, and you just reach out to me. Uh, we come visit me at my office. We can go through some things together. I think I did a pretty good job on all the videos, so it should do a very, uh, very good explanation of uh, these things. And uh, we will be in touch soon. So there is the intro to the course, and I will be in touch uh, in a couple of hours here, putting up your journal article assignment that is due on February 3rd, and I will get you guys your teams. Okay, I'll be in touch soon. Thanks, guys.